What's going on guys? I am on my way to Namibia and I'm excited about that. It is uh, a long time coming. I haven't done a, a travel photography workshop, my business, in nearly two years. I'm like beyond excited but also really, really anxious and trying to harness all of that. <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess there's nothing else to say other than let's go. Before we get into the travel, I should mention that today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. If you're looking for a place to start a travel photography blog or portfolio, Squarespace is a really good spot to start. There's lots of really good blogging tools with a lot of cool features like geotagging, simultaneously posting to your social media, and really clever templates to make portfolios or galleries look really good, really easy. So whether you're looking to sell images or just have a really cool place to show them off, Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and you'll get a little bit of a discount on your first purchase. Travel man, I'll tell you, I've been simultaneously stoked and terrified of when this would all happen again. Hitting the road feels so surreal, so familiar, yet so foreign. I just realized now that I have to wear this mask for like 30 hours. It's 13 hours into uh, Ethiopia, and then another six hours to uh, Vintook, plus layovers, plus waiting for the flight to depart. My lips are already feeling dry, <laughs> but we'll make it. We'll make it. It'll be worth it. It will be worth it. And after 18 months of sitting around home wishing travel would come back, I'm not going to let some chap lips be an excuse. Besides, it seems like Ethiopian Airlines heard me and dropped some lip chap into my welcome bag. pulled up over the clouds of Toronto with CN Tower in the distance. And as we did, my plan of sleeping for the entire 13 hour flight rolled into nervous excitement. Instead, I spent most of the journey just staring aimlessly into the atmosphere through my window. 13 hours later, we landed in Addis Ababa, worlds away from home. Okay, I made it to Addis Ababa Airport. I am uh, exhausted. It's so, so surreal to be traveling again. I just kind of feel like I'm in deja vu right now. Oh, I'm actually feeling the altitude, like, actually. And this airport's surreal. There's a lot of people, like, in sanitation outfits, walking around cleaning things. Everybody's masked up, of course. But yeah, I'm feeling the altitude. I'm having a bit of trouble breathing and talking and walking at the same time. But I want to clear something up. Out of one side of my mouth, I've been telling you guys that I'm broke right now. And on the other side, I'm flying business class. But let me explain really quick. Back last year, I guess two years ago, when we were still working really hard and traveling and business was good and I was running tours, I was putting basically everything I could on credit card and then paying it off right away to collect points. And when you're running photo tours and you're spending like tens of thousands of dollars on one tour and doing that monthly, you accumulate a ton of points. So I still have a bunch of leftover points, although I'm starting to run out. I'm also running out of breath. There's lack of altitude. Anyways, um, I'd love to get a proper Ethiopian coffee, but I think I've got to get to my gate. You know what? Coffee first, then the gate. Exhausted? I should have slept on this last flight, but I was still too excited. I didn't actually fall asleep until just before we landed. Made it to Windhoek. One, I'm overdressed. I don't think I caused that. And two, I'm exhausted. Just waiting for my driver, pay parking, heading into town. I'm so jet lagged. I just forgot how, how this is. <laughs> I'm just out of it and it's hot, which is awesome. But 
I'm like being held together right now by coffee and excitement. So um, we're gonna cruise downtown to Chameleon Backpackers. It's kind of where I've stayed since the first time I came here. Ooh, like nine years ago, eight years ago, whenever that was, I've been staying there forever. So we're gonna go there, get a good night's sleep, and then kick off this trip. I'm so excited. You know what? Excited is an understatement. This place still feels like home away from home. In fact, some of my photos are on display here. In fact, there's even a photo of me on display. That's me, eight years ago, without a hat. First of all, Defender. Maybe not as cool as Simba, my Defender, but pretty cool. This is our setup. Um, this is what we're cruising in. There's five of us. And yeah, it's like a safari vehicle, essentially. If I can remember which key opens this door, I'll show you. So yeah, there's back seats. There's three of them. There's two there. And then it's kind of separated. And then my driver's seat's up there, co-pilot there. All the windows come down so you can shoot through the windows. But also the roof pops open so you can shoot up through the roof. There's a, a luggage hold back here. A couple spare tires. Fun fact, I've never made it through a Namibia trip without blowing through one tire. And actually one time I blew through four <laughs> in one trip. Um, but there's not enough luggage space there because we have a ton of camping stuff too. So we also have a trailer. We got this trailer set up. So it's packed with camping equipment, tents and sleeping bags and stretchers to sleep on and all sorts of fun stuff. So I'm super excited. The group's all ready to go. I literally think we're leaving in 10 minutes. So. We better get packed and moving. And moving on we did. We're headed south towards the Quiver Tree Forest, one of the coolest places in Namibia for travel photography. I mean, look at this place. It feels like another planet. We're on the Quiver Trees. It was about a five hour drive to get here and we're running a bit late. Oh, hey lizard. Can't see him, but I saw him. Anyways, it took about five hours to get here and we're running late because one of the participants in this workshop got uh, got screwed over by the airline and ended up being a full day late. So basically we picked her up and just bolted. But we're running a bit late, still have about an hour until sunset. This place is awesome and also incredibly difficult to photograph. And I did something stupid. I forgot my camera <laughs> in the lodge. So I've got to drive back to the lodge then I'll come back and we'll make some pictures. Okay, camera in hand again, I'm good to go. I can take pictures with now that I have a camera. Uh, you guys might remember when I was last here, which would have been 2018. I struggled so much to find a composition. I literally spent almost two hours trying to make a photo and just found myself frustrated because it's so cool, but you don't have a sky hardly ever. And on top of it, it's just, it's busy. And when I say busy, there's not a lot of people. It's just, there's a lot going on. So I really struggled. And in the end, I found a photo I absolutely loved. I was really happy with the outcome of my photo at the end here. So what I'm trying to do this time is improve on that. I think every time I go to a location, I'm trying to get a better photo than the time before, up until the point that I'm like, I can never make a better photo than that. At which point I then try to do something unique or try to create details. So I'm still at the stage that I want to do better. Better is always better, right? Until it becomes a burden. Always looking for the better photo can be exhausting and frustrating. And in a place like the Quiver Trees, you can't use epic light as a crutch. You need to search for compositions. So let me walk you through my brain a little bit. <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is make these trees look powerful. In photography, to make something look powerful, you want to look down from down to up at them. If you shoot up down, you make them look weak. It's just perspective. So I want something that I can shoot from the down upwards, not only to make it look powerful, but because it creates a cleaner sky. 
Ideally, what I'd like to find is a tree like this one that's absolutely up in the sky and also has kind of a clean background, ideally with other trees that are also clean behind it. But the problem with nature is, well, nature wasn't made by a photographer. Perfect doesn't exist. Man, you ever wanna have a battle with your creativity? You ever wanna really learn composition? This is an absolute challenge. There's so many near perfect photos. Wherever I wander, I see images. But every time I pull my camera out to them, I see glaring flaws. A tree cut off in the background, a shrub that's a distracting element, or even just the shape of the tree that bends the wrong way so your eye moves away from the scene. Namibia's quiver tree forest is one of the most magically frustrating photo destinations on the planet. Until it kind of all comes together in perfect simplicity. I walked around this place about 15 times and I just couldn't find things that lined up exactly the way I wanted to. And I'm getting a little bit greedy because I did make a photo I loved last time. Uh, I came back to this spot for two reasons. One, it's the favorite thing I found this time. And the other thing, I wanted to try to mark it for Astro when we come back later, because I think this will be a really nice Astro frame. You've got this tree and it kind of overhangs a clump of four other trees. It kind of creates like a natural frame, I guess. And you have a couple trees on the edges. It, it, like I said, I think it kind of works. Um, there's no camera tricks available in Quiver Tree. You don't have long exposure to your advantage. You don't have great light. You, there's no camera tricks. You just have to find a good composition. And this isn't perfect, but it's probably the best I found. We're going F16, uh, one over 13 ISO 100. And the light's really shadowy now. I think the best light's gonna be right after sunset or right at sunset. So I'll probably take it again. This image works. Is it an improvement on my last image from here? I think so. Is there room for improvement? Probably, but I'm very happy with this. After scoring a win in the battle of travel photographer versus quiver tree, we grabbed some dinner and waited for the stars to come out. At night, we wandered back in, and again, I grabbed an image I love. Let's score this trip, Brendan 2, Quiver Tree 0. Okay, we're up at 6.15. It's cold this morning, and uh, I'm sure some of you remember that at Quiver Tree, they actually rescued a bunch of cheetahs. There's two older rescued cheetahs over here, and then they had two babies that they rescued from a farm when they were like two or three days old, apparently. You might remember I photographed them last time I was here. They're still over there, but they're a little bit more grown up this morning. So we're gonna do some cheetah photography, hopefully this morning. We're gonna try to visit the older ones. And then after we're gonna go visit the young ones. And of course, because they were, you know, basically they were raised by a dog. If you can believe that, the only way they survived was because a dog that they have here gave them milk. Um, and because they've been raised by a dog and humans, they're very, very domesticated. So they're kind of hard to photograph, but we're gonna try. So I've got 500 millimeters <laughs> that I've rented. These older cheetahs are called Saddam and Gaddafi. And unlike their namesakes, they're gentle, beautiful creatures. And the way the morning light kisses them makes for some stunning images.
After some time in the morning light with the cheetah tyrants, we crossed over to the cheetahs I knew as kittens. They've grown up. But I couldn't get a photo of them because they were too busy trying to sit on my lap or eat my microphone. That was a pretty fantastic way to start this Namibia trip. The cheetahs are incredible and actually the last time we were here, we were with these cheetahs and they were only a half year old so it's crazy to be reintroduced to them three years later and actually one of them tried to eat my microphone <laughs> off camera. Of course you don't get footage of that stuff. And uh, yes, it's sad that uh, wild animals need to be rescued and uh, grow up in sanctuaries. I don't love that fact, but there's constantly gonna be an ethical debate of whether it's better to just let an animal die in the wild or to save it. When you raise it from birth, it can never go back to being truly wild. It's an ethical debate for that'll last forever. I tend to side with the, you gotta let nature play its course. But then again, the human interaction caused you to need to make that inter intervention in the first place. So I'm a big believer that you have to preserve as much land as possible for wild animals so that situations like this don't have to happen. That's just where I stand on it. So um, I don't wanna make this into an ethical debate. It was a beautiful morning, a beautiful evening, and we had some cool stars last night as well. So I'm excited to keep rolling on this trip and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.